Now, I'm hoping this bridge doesn't continue falling down. This beam feels pretty strong, so hopefully I'm okay. If you're someone that can never decide what type of paper you'd like in your journal, then this journal gives you the choice of two types. And as a bonus, it's got a really original cover design. Hi, I'm Ruby from The Useful Journal. Like this video and subscribe to my channel for more detailed dot grid journal reviews and ideas for how to set out your journal. Today I'm reviewing the Key A5 Dotted Journal by Life of Colour. I will tell you a bit about the brand and their products, the packaging, the construction, features and markings of the journal. I will talk about the paper and give you a pen test and I will talk about the brand's approach to social and environmental responsibility. Life of Colour is based in Sydney, Australia and the journals are made in China. Jodie wanted to create products that fell into a mid-price range in the market to give people an alternative choice. Jodie's mission is to provide good quality and affordable products that encourage people to be creative anytime, anywhere. The business mostly focuses on art products and painting kits, mostly with mandalas, and provides two journals for use with their products. The key journal has a red cover and is a combination of white and craft dotted pages and they also have a B journal with a yellow cover which is a combination of unmarked white and black pages. The journals can be bought from the Life of Colour website and have a very reasonable price of $37.50 Australian. That works out at about $25 US and that's about 16 cents US per page. It's pretty good value for the quality of this journal. You can earn points towards future purchases by making purchases, referring friends, posting on social media, and they also celebrate birthdays. I received no gifts with my order. I received the package in a recycled mailer, which is reasonably common now in Australia. The journal box was enclosed in a thin plastic packet. The black journal box is heavy card with a sheen to it and is decorated with a key design. The journal was wrapped in a layer of tissue paper. The A5 journal has 160 GSM paper and 160 pages. The cover is leatherette but has a brushed velvety finish stamped with a gold key and filigree design. The back cover also has a gold stamped key with the brand name. The journal has an elastic closure that hasn't left any marks on the cover so far and has a good amount of tension. There is a pocket on the inside of the back cover which doesn't quite go all the way across so a bit of a bump can be felt through the last few pages. There is a pen loop glued between the pocket and the cover and two bookmark ribbons, one with a key charm attached. They are a good length and reach around the corner. The journal has rounded corners and plain edges to the pages. The journal is quite light for a 160 page journal with 160 GSM paper, coming in at a lower weight than most other brands, even though it's a similar thickness. Am I forgetting something? Oh yes, there are two different types of paper. The biggest feature of this journal is the mix of craft and white pages. They're in groups of eight double-sided pages with 16 single sides. I tend to use 20 to 30 pages per month, which means that I would be shifting between the white and the craft pages every month. It would be quite challenging to work out a theme that could cope with that. I suppose I could use 32 pages a month by adding in a few more spreads or alternatively I could tear out some pages to reduce the number of pages in each signature. But tell me, if you've ever had a journal like this with different types of paper in it, how did you do it? The journal has a good quality spine but the pages are bound quite tightly and don't really lay flat. I had to use a clip to hold the pages open 
And this would be especially a problem when doing watercolor because the paint might drip across the page. There are 10 signatures, five of each color paper. The joins between the signatures are absolutely perfect. The end bands on this journal are fraying a little bit. It's really only an aesthetic problem because they would still be helping to secure the ribbons and they would still be providing extra support to the spine. The page edges sit nicely inside the cover edges. You might have seen in a recent video that I spilt coffee all over this journal. Because the cover is leatherette, I was able to wipe that coffee off and it doesn't seem to have affected that brushed velvety kind of finish at all. So I am so happy about that. I wasn't so lucky with the internal pages, unfortunately, but nothing that can't be covered up with a bit of paper or washi tape. Inside the journal, we immediately see an owner page that includes a picture to color in. The front page also has a date started prompt. Following that was a page suggesting how to use the dot grid pages. However, as mine got quite damaged by the coffee and I don't need those kind of instructions and it's also that awkwardly sitting inside cover page, I've glued them together. So mine now goes straight to a pen swatch page. I'm not sure how I'm going to use this page because it only swatches 24 pens but it's an interesting addition. Usually you do your pen swatching in the back of your journal, but I suppose because this brand sells a lot of art materials and coloring pens and the like, that's why they've put their pen swatch page at the front of the journal. I love the addition of a vision board, which is quite similar to a level 10 life page. The following page is another coloring page, and then we enter into the dot grid pages and there are no other marked pages. There are 23 dots across the page and 35 dots down the page. This is substantially less than a typical journal, which would have 27 dots across and 39 down the page. There are two reasons there are less dots and it's not because the page itself is any smaller. It's a standard A5 size. There are wider margins around the dot grid on all sides and unfortunately the dot grid is 5.05 millimeters. This makes it hard to use a ruler to work out your boxes because by the time you get to 12 boxes, which should be six centimeters, it's actually 6.6 .6 centimeters. I've resolved this issue by creating my own grid guide ruler, especially for this journal, and I've based it on a design by Scribbles That Matter. It has grid measurements for two to four columns across the page, and then you flip it over for grid measurements for two to four rows. It would be simple enough to add marks for five rows on this side too. The dots are dark, much darker than average. They're a gray color, but they do still stand out when you've filled in your page. In my dot darkness test, most journals sit around the third color, but this journal's dots weren't properly covered by the fourth color, but are covered by black. At least you can see them clearly when you're writing in a line. As I've mentioned, this key journal has 160 pages of 160 GSM paper in both bright white and craft pages. The white paper is reasonably smooth, but it's really not well suited to fountain pens. There's just a bit too much feedback through the pen. The paper dries very quickly. When you scribble in a Pigma Micron 05 pen and wipe your hand across, there was no smearing, just about straight away. I can't see any smudging of my two second sample. There was also no obvious smearing when highlighting over a Pigma Micron pen. The craft paper is darker and more textured than I've seen in my notebook therapy craft paper journal. They're really quite different and the life of color paper is not quite as smooth. The craft paper has a finish on it that kind of messes with some of your pens when you're writing with them, but I'll talk about that more in the pen test. Both papers cope pretty well with water. There's a bit of crinkling on both the white and the craft papers, but color doesn't go through to the back and the texture of the paper doesn't change on the back, but does on the front. 
I would describe this paper as free of ghosting and bleed through, even when using stamps, fountain pen, and calligraphy inks. The ultra fine Sharpie can just be seen on the reverse side if you're trying really hard to see it. The fine Sharpie did show through on both papers. All the pens performed well on the white paper, except for fountain pens, which had quite a bit of feathering. There was a small amount of shadow after erasing lead pencil. Whiteouts usually look better on ivory paper, but they actually look pretty good on this white paper. Because of the kind of hard finish on the craft paper, gel pens were fine, like Pigra Microns, my Scribbles That Matter pen, but not all of them. I couldn't get several pens to lay down ink properly the first go. They kept skipping. This tended to be the pens with a harder nib and less fluid ink flow, like my Signo Angelic pens, Pilot G2. The ballpoint pens also felt like they didn't write too well on the craft paper. The black pens were fine, but get a bit lost on the paper. The texture of the craft paper worked well with coloured pencils though, and I also liked using the gouache paints on the paper. I'm thinking the only way to conceal a mistake is to patch it with another piece of craft paper. Is there a craft version of whiteout that I just don't know about? Every year, Life of Colour partners with one charity and then also throughout the year, they donate products and resources to a number of different organisations. They have a specific interest in using products that can be used by people with disabilities and work closely with disability services in Australia. While Life of Colour have done a lot to reduce the impact of their packaging, for instance, by using recycled mailers and reducing plastic packaging, particularly on their pens, the paper does not appear to be certified as being sourced from sustainable forestry. The brand says they are actively looking into how to reduce their environmental impact. So hopefully they'll try to source a more sustainable product in the future. Overall, this is a nice journal. It's very well constructed and it can cope with a wide range of art materials. The only obvious downsides are that it doesn't lie flat and that the dot grid is not a clean five millimeter size. If you love bright colors and you like the idea of having two different types of paper, then this journal is really good value for what you get. I hope you found this review useful. Like this video and subscribe to my channel for more reviews just like this one. See ya.